Okay, in this video I'm going to cover the assembly of the new Picnic Quads NQXF frame, which is a folding frame designed to work with the components from the uh, Blade NQX and the NQX FPV quadcopters. So I'll just do a quick rundown of all the parts that are included in the kit. First we have four mortar mounts here for the boom arms, the top cover plate, the bottom uh, main frame plate. We have uh, four standoffs here which can act as a landing skid. Uh, and then there's, let's see, we have uh, 12 screws here. There's actually four different lengths and, and uh, three of each length are included. You only be using two for the build, so there's one extra of each. Uh, there's two uh, carbon fiber washers here, a whole bunch of 256 threaded nuts, uh, a few of these micro rubber bands for securing motor wires, a uh, foam pad for battery uh, securing and positioning, and a few loom bands to also add in battery securing to the frame. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the build. Uh, move some of this stuff out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to take two of the shortest screws and two of the second to longest screws. Okay, and then I'm going to put two of the shortest screws through the inner holes of two of the bone arms. So it's going to be the bottom holes here like that. I'm starting uh, with the uh, gloss side on top. Just push that through. Sometimes the screws will have to be threaded through if the, the hole's just a little on the tight side. Okay. And then on these other arms, we're going to be putting them on the, the inner holes here. Actually, the, it'll be the outer holes for the frame. Um, and I should point out, this, this would be the, the time, if you're going to use the screws, if you plan on using just the screws as landing skids, these uh, washers should be installed to help level the quad, the frame out. Uh, otherwise, the, the, they're actually not needed. I'm going to go ahead and install them just to show how they'll go on there for demonstration. These are a little tight. You have to thread these in a little bit. There they go. Okay. Put the gloss side up on that, so I'll flip it over. Okay, and then again, these will go on the the outer holes of each boom arm. Okay, then these are going to go into the the main frame, and you're going to put the ones of the longer screws towards the long the front of the frame, which is the rounded off part here. You can just insert it anywhere into the, the slot. Worry about alignment later. And then you take four of the nuts and secure them to the bottom. And I actually already have one here that's been assembled like that, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start from this point now. See. The arms are able to pivot, and they've they're he but they're held to the the main frame now. So now I'm going to go ahead and install the flight controller before we get onto the top covered plate. Um, and the the wire is obviously going to be coming out the back of the quad here. So I'm just going to go ahead and position this on there. I like to view it from the bottom to make sure that the there's plenty of clearance for these uh, motor plugs, and um, you also want to get these these arms so that they're lined up with the holes to make sure that you're gonna the board's gonna clear front and back between the uh, the folding action here and right there is looking pretty good for this one you see it's centered right between where where the arms will will be positioned okay and now it's clearing the the plug mounts the motor plugs pretty well Okay, so the next step is going to be installing one of the loom bands. You can actually use one or two of them right now. I'm going to 
I'm just gonna install one this time actually. Just go over the front, give it a twist, then come over the back. Make sure it comes underneath the uh, the battery wire there. Let's just cut over this one motor plug. Pull that up, and now we have for later. We have a uh, a strap to hold the battery on. Once we get to the the point of actually using the battery here, I'm gonna take the top plate two of the longest screws and then two of the second shortest screws. These I believe are three eighths of an inch long. Okay and then the shorter ones are going to go through the front of the top plate. I if I can pick it up here. Long ones the back here. Okay, and then we're actually going to be installing two nuts onto each screw. And what this does is it uh, elevates the top plate up enough so that it clears the, the flight controller. And I actually have one here that's built up. I've already got the nuts installed on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and and move forward with that. You can see there's two nuts installed on each one. And the screws, they're not so tight that the screws can't spin a little bit if that's needed for assembly and then they'll snug up in the very end. So go ahead and take the uh, previous assembly with the bottom plate and we're going to just try to line things up here. Go through all the boom arms and the holes in the, in the main frame plate at the same time. Got one that's being a little stubborn, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn the screw a little bit to try to get it, help it go through. Okay, now that that's down most of the way, we'll focus on the front arms here. Those ones just push through most of the way. Just go ahead and thread these down so that they're nice and tight. There's that. In some instances, you might have to get in there and hold the nuts from spinning just to help that tighten down. There we go. Now the folding action is coming together nicely as well. And it's just a matter of installing four more nuts here. Finger tight is probably good enough to start anyway. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and install the motor mounts. Four of them here. They just break apart. Just like a, like a little, have like the little sprues that you would see on like an old model. Just snap them right apart. And then there's typically going to be powder inside the square hole. I'll just kind of, got a pair of tweezers here. Just knock most of that out. Okay, and then with the uh, these little extensions aiming downward, I'm going to go ahead and install each one of the motor mounts onto the boom arms here. Should be a nice press fit. Okay, so now we have a completed frame. 
Next we'll go ahead and install the motors and uh, get, get things ready to attach a battery. Okay, so now we're going to be installing motors into this uh, folding frame here. We've got a set of four 6mm motors from the Micro Motor Warehouse here. I'm going to start out with uh, one of the clockwise motors. Install that in the front right. And then when installing these, you want to make sure that you never push on the actual motor shaft because that can blow the back out. I like to start from the bottom side because there's a little small. Uh, you know, chamfer around over on the top of the motor, which makes it a little bit easier to install. So I'm just going to go ahead and push that in there, and kind of come in and just push on it, making sure not to push on the wires at all, and just until it, get, it becomes flush with the uh, the rest of the mount. And then this uh, little extension part here will kind of act to keep the motor from, or the wires anyway, from from uh, getting hit too too much. Go ahead and just work my way around, alternating from uh, clockwise to counterclockwise. So counterclockwise will be next here. Slide that one up in, get it into place. Okay, now the motors are seated in properly. Next we'll be getting the wires uh, routed through the frame and connected to the flight controller. Okay. So for the wire routing on the rear motors, I've been taking the wire and going, and obviously you, you I mean you can experiment with this, this yourself if you're using different wires or motors. The wires might be uh, of a different length, but at least for these uh, ones from the micro motor warehouse, which I'm pretty sure have the same wire length as the uh, stock motors, I'm going to show what's been working well for myself here. Just uh, start in the front side of the motor here and kind of wrap, wrap around the, the arm once and then you have to push the fold the arm forward a little bit just to get the plug section up and through so I'm going through the, the gap behind that fell out there going between the two frame plates and behind the, the motor plug there and that's going to come out just the back there and then there's actually a hole where you can push that plug back down through. I'm actually going to use a pair of tweezers here just to help push that through. There we go. Then that comes out the bottom side just like so. And turn that over. And plug it in. And then the, the folding action really shouldn't shouldn't affect be affected or affect the motor wire okay the next thing I'm going to do is take one of these micro rubber bands and this is something that could have been done much earlier in the build but I don't personally don't have too much trouble stretching them out over the motors That'll just help kind of keep the motor wire from flopping all over the place and help kind of keep it in place for some of the folding action. And then for the front, the uh, front motors here, same thing, I'm staying on the front side of the motor, giving it one loop around like this. Oh. Coming around. And then coming right in and going directly through this hole in the front. See there it comes out there. And then since the plugs are towards the, the back of the flight controller, the the wire is taking a little bit more direct approach. And just carefully turn the end around there and plug that in. And there's still plenty of excess there. And when you're folding it in and out, still plenty of uh, plenty of wire for all that action. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, finished wiring up the rest of the frame here, just following what I did from one side to the other. Uh, you can see how the wires are routed through now. 
and the folding action works fine all around. I didn't uh, didn't put the four rubber bands on, but that's something that can be done obviously at any time. A little tougher to do with the propellers on, obviously though. So next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and take this foam pad and get uh, get prepared for the battery mounting. I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and uh, snip off a little bit uh, less than half of this, and that's just going to sit right in here and act as a cushion for the battery to cushion it from the nuts that are exposed there and it also helps kind of secure these motor wires into place I'm actually not even going to um, to adhere this to the battery I'm going to leave the uh, the backing on one side I'm just going to go ahead and sneak this underneath the rubber band was put in earlier. Stick that down just like that. And now a battery can be slipped right underneath the rubber band. Has nice cushion for the uh, from the foam there. Okay, the frame is uh, about done here. Almost ready to test fly. Just need to uh, add some propellers. Also. Uh, want to figure out or at least go over uh, the landing skid options here and right now if uh, I did go ahead and put the the two uh, washers in the front so the quad should rest pretty level with just the four screws on the bottom and if you want to use it like that that's uh, perfectly fine uh, there's also the option to install the four you know, the four uh, standoffs here Okay. They provide a little bit more more um, secure landing skid as opposed to just having the screws. Or if you're like myself and you want to go for the lightest possible setup, just going to come in with a pair of nippers and take them all right off. And have a low profile frame. That does make. Um, keeping the frame level during initialization a little bit more tricky. So typically what I'll do is plug the battery in when it's sitting like this and then put it underneath. Or um, some folks I guess have reported that you can uh, initialize upside down, although I haven't really tried that myself. Okay, now before I go ahead and install the propellers, I'm just gonna make sure that everything is tightened down really well here. Cause uh, you know, with this really, really thin carbon fiber sections, they're pretty flexible on their own. Um, and the, the frame itself kind of works as a torsion box. You can see right now it's pretty darn flexible. I haven't gone ahead and, and tightened anything down very well yet. So I'm just going to hold the nuts on the bottom, tighten down each screw as much as I feel re I reasonably can here. And there's a long way to go on that one. And an another thing I found. Um, since there's a couple extra screws left in the set, um, you, you can go ahead and take a small drop of super glue, put it on the end of a toothpick, and just get it in the very end of the threads there. It will kind of bond things together, and you might have to use a, uh, an extra screw in the event that one of them breaks or you have to replace an arm or something, but it is uh, one way that you can really make sure that this, this assembly stays nice and secure. The folding action feels a lot more secure, and the frame is a lot more rigid. I mean, there's some flex to it, but it's pretty darn rigid. I think actually one of these screws could be tightened up a little bit more. Go, up, go ahead and figure out which one is allowing that little bit of slap still. Ah, I think it was this one here, yeah. Oh yeah, much better now. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and install the propellers. This is one part where you really have to be careful to make sure that you support the bottom of the uh, the motors when doing this, so you can blow the the back of the cans right out. 
and this is the NQX, I always like to think of the propellers going away from the board, at least from the front and back when you're looking at it. Um, and we do have a clockwise motor here in the front right, so we're going to be looking for a clockwise propeller. And another thing, these are the uh, CGO23 propellers, and they will bottom out against the bearing on the top of the, the motor. But if the propellers that you have or the motors that you're using do not allow that, uh, you, you're going to either want to drill these out or trim trim the motor shafts down so that these do bottom out against the top of the either the bearing or the can itself to make sure that uh, if you have an inverted crash it doesn't blow the bottom of the can out. And whenever you're installing these, it's really important to make sure that you have support, support on the bottom of the can. See I've got my thumbnail holding that in place pretty much as I push down. I'm just going to work my way around and get them all in like that. Okay, so here's a complete, complete frame, pretty much ready to fly.